Uh, thank you for joining us. I am Pastor Heather Wurst. We are in the Williamsburg United Methodist Church in Williamsburg, Pennsylvania. Jane Dybert is joining me on the Clavinova. She is leading us in music this morning. Uh, usual response during this Easter season. Yes, Easter is not just a day. We join in the response where I say, Christ is risen, you respond with Christ is risen indeed. So let's do that this Sunday, reminding us that there is hope because he is risen. He is risen indeed. And it's this time of year, this whole season, these days, where we remember that Jesus' spirit lives on in each of us. In the Bible, the early church was described in this way in Acts 2. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate with their ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. So over the next few weeks, we are going to follow those traditions. We are creating a temple of worship in our hearts when we know we are still not physically together. By sharing in words and music, we are connected. The earliest Christians worshiped in their homes before they had churches, and so will we, until we can meet again in our sanctuaries. Because at the heart of the matter, we are connected through the spirit that makes us one in love. So I invite you to join together with me in prayer. It will be a repeat after me prayer. So let us pray. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, help us to take this time to center on you. For you made us. You gave us life. And you continue to be with us every moment, every breath, every step. Amen. So let us join in music, singing our praises to God. I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. If you have the hymn, no, it's 154. I'll have the words and the lyrics on the other side of the screen in a moment. We'll sing the first three verses. I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. This week we read a passage from the book of Acts, which offers us wonderful encouragement and reminders that death is never the last word. So hear these words, Acts 2, verses 24 to 28. God raised him up. God freed him from death's deathful, dreadful grip, since it was, was impossible for death to hang on to him. David says about him, I foresaw that the Lord was always with me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my body will live in hope, because you won't abandon me to the grave, nor permit your Holy One to experience decay. You have shown me the paths of life. Your presence will fill me with happiness. The David that we hear about in this passage is King David, David who wrote the Psalms. And the quote is from Psalm 16. 
Let me read that. Psalm 16, verses 5 to 11. You, Lord, are my portion, my cup. You control my destiny. The property lines have fallen beautifully for me. Yes, I have a lovely home. I will bless the Lord who advises me. Even at night, I am instructed in the depths of my mind. I always put the Lord in front of me. I will not stumble because God is on my right side. That's why my heart celebrates and my mood is joyous. Yes, my whole body will rest in safety because you will not abandon my life to the grave. You won't let your faithful followers see the pit. You teach me the way of life. In your presence is total celebration. Beautiful things are always in your right hand. And it might feel odd in the midst of all that's going around, going on around us, to feel, to celebrate, to know that we are in the season of Easter, a season of celebration, and perhaps it's an opportunity to take hold for at the heart of our Christian faith, take hold of the call to live our lives and the belief and the assurance that death is not the final word. And that is why we as Christians are called Easter people. The tomb becomes the womb of new life. And we ponder, what would we do differently if we really believed there was nothing to fear? So today, we imagine Jesus is at our right hand, counseling us throughout our days and saying to us again and again these words, peace be with you. And that is what he did when he appeared to the disciples after his resurrection. They were in a locked room, fearing for their lives. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? So let's let Jesus speak these words to us as well. And I am reading from John 20, verses 19 to 22. So hear these words from Jesus. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As God sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. In that moment, in that moment of fear, Jesus wanted his disciples to have two things, peace and the Spirit. Jesus offered them the chance. He wanted them to take his breath so that they would feel his Spirit living in them. So I want you to take a moment and turn to the people who are gathered with you or text somebody or make a note to call somebody after we end our time of worship together. But I want you to share with those around you, however you are able, and let them know peace be with you. So take a moment and share with those around you. Text them, message them, write a note. Hey, I'm going to call and tell them peace be with you. Jane, peace be with you. And also with you. Thinking back to our opening scripture, those opening words from Acts, how they tell us the disciples ate their food with glad and generous hearts. And one way we can be glad and generous is to share how we ourselves in these moments, in this time, are finding strength, hope, love, and peace. This week, Jesus talks and shared with us how he wants us to find peace. So let's talk about peace. I want you to think for a moment Write it down, share it out loud, write it in the comments, share with those around you. What are the sights, the sounds, the words, the actions? What are those things that act in your life as a voice in your ear? What are those things that have shared with you that phrase, peace be with you? Maybe it was when you were taking a walk, the birds were singing, the leaves were rustling in the wind, the creek was moving. So what are those sights, those sounds, those words, the actions that have whispered in your ear, peace be with you? When have you felt peace this week? Or if you're struggling to find peace, if you haven't experienced much peace, what do you have in your memory as something that brings you peace? Share it with those around you. Write it in the comments. Text somebody, message somebody. 
And as you do that, I want you to complete this sentence. I see peace in blank. I see peace when. I see peace where. Just one of those sentences, not all three. But where do you see peace? Maybe one of those moments is right now, as we are gathered together in worship. So let's take a moment and offer our praise to God for the peace that he is whispering to us, shouting at us right now. So let us sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. In our hymn notes 95, I'll have the words on the screen, but let us find peace in these words. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Maybe for you, that song reminded you of that time in worship where we offer our praise and thanks to God through the giving and offering of our tithes and gifts. I am so thankful for all of you who are continuing to send in your offerings. And how about we take a moment to offer our thanks to God, rather by gathering your offering that you might send in this week, sharing with those around you those times that you have received God's blessings. So let's take a moment, and then Jane again will lead us in these words, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let's sing our thanks and praise to God together. So let us spend some time in prayer. And again, we'll continue the ritual of doing popcorn prayer where I will begin us in prayer. I will pause, Jane will have some music in the background, and you will be invited to lift up your own prayer concerns, your own worries, your needs, your burdens that you are carrying with you this week. Whether you type them in the comments, whether you share them with those around you, whether you write them down or even text them to someone's. So we know there are many concerns that we want to call to mind. We know there are names of people that we want to lift up. We all know there are many needs, many people in need of prayer and comfort this day. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, for those who are sick and recovering, for those who are caring for loved ones at home, for those who are caring for persons in the medical fields, all those health care workers. We pray for all those who are deemed essential workers who are still going into their jobs day after day, for those who are separated from their loved ones, for those who are feeling alone and isolated, for those who are helping and just feel so tired, for those who are struggling to find friends, food, and comfort, for those who are afraid, and I know you have many more concerns to this list to, that you wish to add. So let us take a moment pray, and then I'll pause. So let me start us off in prayer this day. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you know the needs that exist. You have heard the 
list of needs that I have lifted up, and you know the many needs that will be lifted up in a few moments by your faithful and loving people. Everlasting God, continue to offer your peace in these anxious times. We pray for your hope, knowing that hope is never canceled. And in this season of Easter, in the season of resurrection, remind us to hold tight, hold fast to that promise of hope that we have as your Easter people. Everlasting God, fill us with your healing. Fill us with your strength, for we continue to need that strength as we continue through this month. And for the other needs that exist, O oh God, Lord, in your great mercy, hear our prayers that we lift up in this moment. Gracious God, we are thankful and grateful people. Some days we might feel that we are walking alone in this journey, but remind us that we never are alone, that you walk with us, you talk to us, and you call us your own. So Lord, hear us now as we pray. Your children joining our voices together in one voice. As we pray together that prayer, your Son, our risen Lord and Savior, taught us to pray and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen.
people, as we close out our time together, remember, God is always with you. No matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you whispering, peace be with you, guiding and directing your path. So do not live in fear, but let us live in joy. Take heart. This is the heart of the matter. Amen.